Here is the 2024 Hondas that are refreshed. I got the Sonata SEL in the black onyx and the Elantra SEL with convenience package in Amazon. I'm gonna go over the differences between these two refresh, the pros and cons, and the problem that I have. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. Starting with the Elantra standard LED headlights, daytime runnings, and you're getting projected LED headlights when you're going Elantra. That goes into the rework grill. It's no longer an enlarge, it's a two-part. So you got the top part with the horizontal bars, and the Honda badge will be flat when you take the box for the in it's going to be black going into the Sonata it's going to spin nearly the whole front fascia no more running up the hood and the lower gets more aggressive when you go into the inline but even in the SEL trim it still has a more sporty style it's more wide with the satin aluminum that has a boomerang shape that pushes outwards underneath the hood of the SEL we have a 2.0 liter four-cylinder pumping out 147 horsepower with 132 pound-feet of torque paired to an IVT transmission. That's gonna achieve 31 MPGs for the city and 40 MPGs for the highway. Whereas on the Sonata, you're getting the 2.5 liter inline four cylinder, producing 191 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission, achieving 26 MPGs for the city, 36 MPGs for the highway. So you're getting a more sporty drive, but less MPGs, a more everyday drive, but better MPGs. Both vehicles will have over five inches of clearance, but the sit to the Elantra sits lower, whereas the Sonata sits more aggressive. Because we have the convenience package, it's changing the 16-inch wheel that comes for the SEL, putting a 17-inch alloy wheel. The SE gets a 15-inch wheel, and the in will receive a 19 inch wheel with a more sports suspension because it'll be a multi-link rear whereas this is a torsum beam both will have a mcpherson strut front suspension but going into the sonata you're going to receive standard 17 inch wheels and you can option an all-wheel drive for the sel where you can't even option an all-wheel drive for the elantra inline receives 19 inch wheel the convenience package will up these wheels to 18 inch the side rocker flares out more so on the sonata inline you'll get the badging on the side air pocket both will have heated side view mirrors because we have the convenience package for the Elant. Otherwise, that's not going to be a standard feature in which the convenience package on both trims will add a moon roof. Going back to the Sonata, H-styled LED taillights. That's going to be the new signature touch for Hyundai. The lower is going to get the satin aluminum where the exhaust outlets would be. The inline will take the box for dual exhaust outlets and a trunk lit spoiler. Going into the Elantra, LED taillights come standard on the limited trim. The SE and SEL will not receive it. The lower gets the satin aluminum with more or less a diffuser and no exhaust outlets. Quick release is gonna be on both. 14.2 cubic feet of storage for the Elantra with a 22 pound bag holder. And underneath the floor, it's gonna get a spare tire and you can split fold the rear bench in the back at a 40-60 split. Cause I'm tall, I'm just gonna go inside. It's going to have a little bit of a lip, but it has a pretty decent opening. It does sit up a little bit. And when you go to the Sonata, 16.4 cubic feet, it actually sits a little lower, a little bit more of a wider opening. And you have the cargo net in the front. Underneath the floor also receives a spare tire and the same thing, just pull the levers in the back. It will lead to more cargo capacity in the Sonata. Ten-way power seat adjustment is standard on the Sonata with heated front seats. The in-line will receive a unique seat with ultra suede inserts, whereas on the Elantra, you're getting six-way manual seat adjustment. The limited trim gets eight-way power seat adjustment for the driver. The convenience package adds the heated front seats. Headroom for the Sonata and legroom. It's a driver-focused setup, but it's not as much as the Elantra. As you see here, it literally blocks off the passenger with a grab handle and headroom for the Elantra with legroom. The convenience package adds the moonroof, no auto dimming rear view mirror, leather for the shifter, a wireless charger pad, 
leather wrap steering wheel and the heated front seats with dual climate control settings because this is the SEL. When you go into the SE, that's not gonna be the case. You have physical buttons here instead of having to tick everything on the infotainment screen and you have two or a little wedge there with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Blue Link, put it into reverse with a reverse camera, click here and you can change the camera layouts, but it's not going to cover up the whole screen. Whereas when you go into the Sonata, you can click it here to cover the whole screen. And this is a 12.3 information display with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. The convenience package will add the navigation. Dual climate control is standard, and this is a touchpad for the climate control with a 12 volt, two USBs, wireless charging pad will be on the convenience package as well as a moonroof and no auto dimming rear view mirror, no leather wrapped steering wheel. It is multi-function, but the shifter is on the steering column opposed to the Elantra, which gets a actual shifter. The gauge cluster can go through an array of information for the driver, including turn by turn navigation. And when you change the driver modes, it's gonna look a little bit more sporty. And the door is going to get the contrast stitch Bose eight speakers is only on the limited trim. One touch up and down for the front windows and the storage pocket is gonna be a little bit smaller. The Sonata is going to be a little bit longer. One touch up and down for the windows. The Bose sound system will be on the convenience package and the gauge cluster can go through an array of information for the driver. This is a 4.25 information display. When you click the convenience package, you'll get the 12.3 in the center here is gonna be sporty. It opens up to a deep storage pocket push back a little bit more. It's still deep. Cup holder is going to be in the front and the key fobs for both of the Hondas. Headroom for the Sonata and legroom. You'll have a little bit more so here. Storage will be standard. You don't have to tick the box for convenience package with charging ports, cup holders with armrests, and the door is going to have the same segment as the front, except the storage is going to be actually smaller than the Elantra, which you'll see in a second. Sliding to the center, the floor isn't flat. I got the seat back so you can see you'll share some feet space in the footwell but more or less the leg, butt, and shoulder space will be kind of taken care of even though this contours and headroom is actually about the same as the Elantra. Back seat of the Elantra headroom and leg room. When you tick the box for that convenience package, you get storage behind the passenger seat, two USB ports, cup holders with armrests, and the door is going to have the same segment as the front except no contrast stitching and a smaller storage pocket. Sliding into the center, feet space will be shared because the floor isn't completely flat, sharing butt, leg, and shoulder space, just a little bit more so here than the Sonata, but headroom is actually pretty good for somebody that's six foot three. Taking the Elantra out first, and we're talking 44 horsepower less than the base Sonata. Nearly 50 pound feet of torque less than the base Sonata. So it's gonna be a little bit different in that performance line. That vehicle is also longer and wider, so it does need a little bit more horsepower. This also has the IVT, which is basically a CVT, in which it has gear ratios, it doesn't have gears. You sit a little low to the ground here, but the door panels are raised, so it does have a little bit more of that sporty feel to it, especially considering it is driver focused, which is gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros on the Elantra is the setup is very user-friendly for the driver. The con is it's very difficult for the passenger because they can't even use any of the wireless charging pad for that convenience package that we added. You can't even plug in your phone to the 12 volt or USB port. Even for the cup holders, the wall actually comes up a little bit more so, so it just pushes them out. Back seat, you get storage behind the passenger seat adding the convenience package, which it's not a big deal, but all the stuff that you add to the front cockpit is, and on the exterior. MPGs is great, it beats Honda, Toyota, Mazda. 
The touch and feel to the materials does not feel as soft as some of the competition like Mazda, but it's spot on with Toyota and Honda. And the big problem that I have with the Elantra is it's an IVT. We don't get an automatic transmission in which you're gonna have to do services on this like every 30,000 miles. And they have pulleys and belts, which is why you wanna do that. Even though it's gear ratioed, it still goes bad if you don't service it. Whereas a traditional automatic transmission, you can typically go 50,000 miles or more, which is double for a service interval. The drive is smooth though. It's gonna be a little bit noisy because of the way you sit inside. The windshield is large and all the windows around you is as well. And unfortunately, most of the drive, you're going to be hitting a higher RPM because of the IVT transmission here. It does feel like a smaller or baby brother compared to the Sonata, but because of the interior being more closed off, it feels more open in the Sonata. Now, as for the Sonata, 191 horsepower, 181 pound-feet of torque. You sit up just as high as you do in the Elantra. The difference though is the Elantra feels like you're sitting a little lower because the door panels are raised up more and that driver focus setup makes it feel a little bit more sporty. This feels a little bit more open. So I like this concept, but I don't like where the gear shifter is on the steering column. And here we go. One major difference right off the top is driving in sport mode is night and day because of the performance that you're getting out of this engine. The 2.5 liter opposed to the 2.0 is a lot more so, even though this is longer, wider, and a little bit more weight, you will feel quicker in your zero to 60s or your day in and day out between traffic lights or doing whatever activities you do. The drive is actually a little bit smoother here and they're the same size wheels. And I like when you get into the Sonata that you have the ability to get all wheel drive and performance out of the inline because they throw in the turbo charge. And as for my pros on the Sonata, larger screens, more interior space, more cargo capacity, optional all wheel drive and a turbo variant it just has a little bit more bells and whistles when we're thinking 29 $32,000 fully loaded. The cons for the Sonata, the back seat doesn't have any air vents. The storage in the door pocket for the back seat is smaller. It's receiving the same six speakers, but when you upgrade with the 12 speaker Bose, opposed to the Elantra, they get eight speakers. If you take the box for the Elantra, you're getting the best MPGs amongst all the competition. You take the box for Sonata, you get optional all wheel drive, which Honda doesn't even offer, in which both of them will have a more powerful variant than most of the competition. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Gettle Hyundai of Lakewood for giving us these two 2024 Hyundais, the Sonata and the Elantra for our comparison review.